Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, I will be tracking an intense storm system, which could bring the potential for a tornado outbreak across the deep south as we head into this afternoon and this evening, followed by more severe weather across the southeast as we head into your Wednesday. We could have some mountain snow across the Pacific Northwest to end the week, and also looking at your long-range weather forecast in this video. If you guys are new to the channel and have yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. I cover Canada, I cover the United States and the tropics on this channel. So hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Also, if you guys want to help me out and do a favor, definitely hit that like button down below. It's that thumbs up button. This definitely helps get out all this information to more and more people and I definitely appreciate it. So looking here at the severe weather potential later on today, the storm prediction Center has hoisted a level four or five, a moderate risk for severe weather, which means numerous severe thunderstorms are likely, if not expected, across central Mississippi, northeastern portions here of Louisiana, and then a larger area here in the orange. That is an enhanced risk for severe weather. This is portions of southwestern Tennessee, much of Mississippi, far western Alabama. Getting back here into Far East Texas, north central portions of Louisiana, and eastern and southeastern Arkansas. So definitely want to be on the lookout there. Then in the yellow shaded area, that moves up as far here to the north as western Kentucky, middle and western Tennessee, including the Nashville area, and even including the Indianapolis area and south of Chicago. We even have a marginal risk in the dark green for severe weather. Looking at the hazards here for what we can expect with the tornado potential today, we definitely have the threat for some strong, violent, and long track tornadoes across portions of the Mid-South and Deep South here today, really centered on Central Mississippi. That's where we have a 15% shading and a significant hatched area as well, which means we could have those EF2 to EF5 type tornadoes in that area. Also, that does include a 10% hatched area across Northeastern uh, Louisiana, Eastern and Southeastern Arkansas, far Southwest Tennessee and far western Alabama as well and also surrounding that is a 2 to 5 percent shading getting as far north as the Ohio River Valley. Looking at the hail risk this is also pretty significant. The Storm Prediction Center has actually increased this to a 30 percent hatched area for hail across those very same areas into much of west central Mississippi, north central Louisiana, far east Texas and southeastern Arkansas. That's where we could see hailstones greater than two inches in diameter so those golf ball size hailstones are, are larger and also the wind probabilities, they did actually decrease these probabilities from the 30% here in the hatched area earlier back to a 15% probability that covers a much larger zone here from the Tennessee River Valley down south across the Gulf Coast. But even up here into the Ohio Valley, into Indiana, southwestern Ohio, getting into southeastern Illinois, we still could be seeing damaging winds up to around 60 miles per hour with a few of those stronger storms. So again, you want to have your safe place here for tornadoes today. Tornadoes are all, you know, extremely dangerous dangerous no matter if you have an EF0 or an EF5 they're all dangerous in their own ways you want to have plenty of safe places uh, such as storm shelters, basements, and interior room. If you do not have a basement, um, you know, put as many walls between you and the outdoors as possible. Stay away from windows. And if you receive a tornado warning, take shelter, take action immediately. And again, the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning, a tornado watch means conditions are favorable for the development of thunderstorms that could produce tornadoes. Those are those supercells we look for. So do you want to stay informed here and know where to go if a tornado warning does occur that's with the tornado watch now with the tornado warning you want to take cover immediately take shelter now in a basement interior room away from walls and away from windows here in the most interior room of your house that means take action and stay informed on the forecast here as well with those tornado warnings you want to have multiple ways to receive warnings whether whether it's a NOAA weather radio a wireless emergency alert system here such as a weather app uh, radar omega a great weather app there as well with the radar analysis on that. You have the internet itself. You have local TV and radio. You have the outdoor sirens here. You don't always want to rely on the outdoor sirens, but they're there if you need them. And also family, friends, and coworkers and stuff like that messaging you and letting you know what the weather is like here um, across those areas as well. So have multiple ways to receive warnings later on today. 
So let's here kind of zoom out the big picture and show you why we're seeing this potential outbreak of tornadoes today. And it really stems from the potential of, you know, we have a trough. We have a trough across the north central United States. And we have a very powerful cold front here sweeping through from west to east across much of the mid Mississippi Valley and lower Missouri Valley region. Um, that's going to be bringing that large cold pocket aloft with it. And ahead of the system, we're going to have a lot of warmer air. Temperatures will be warming today into the 60s and 70s across much of the deep south along the Gulf Coast here. We could even see some upper 70s, low 80s, not out of the realm of possibility. But look at where that strong cold front is. We have behind that colder and drier air. Temperatures in the, for highs today will be in the teens and 20s across much of the northern plains and the inner mountain west. So this is definitely a strong cold front sweeping through. And we also have to look at the dew point temperatures too. We have dew points rising here out of the western and central Gulf of Mexico, advecting northward. Dew points will be rising to the 60s and 70s. 70s as far north as Arkansas, western Tennessee, much of Mississippi, western Alabama, getting back into Louisiana and east Texas, and that will feel the threat for severe weather. But as that cold front moves through, we're going to start to see that drier, more, more cooler air start to work in behind the front, and it will put an end to the severe weather threat from west to east as those dew points start to fall off into the overnight hours and going into your Wednesday morning, especially across Arkansas, western Tennessee, northwestern Mississippi, and then getting back toward east. Texas. Again, we're got to look at the kinematics with this. We don't just look at the thermodynamics. We got to look at the wind energy in the atmosphere, the 500 millibar layer. This is your mid-level jet, and this is starting to ramp up as we head into the afternoon and evening today across the mid-south here. We got a very powerful mid-level jet rounding the base of this trough where you see the purples and reds coming together here. Those are essentially 70 to 80 knots or higher on the mid-level jet across this area. We also have a very appreciable low-level jet in the 850 millibar layer. We got you know low-level wind energy here around 50 to 60 knots. That is more than enough of kinematic energy than what you need for tornado genesis. So definitely have the potential for tornadoes, especially across those enhanced and moderate risk zones today. And especially looking here at the significant tornado parameter, we got some pretty high values here showing up on the HRRR model here, the 06Z run, and you can see really centered on that enhanced and moderate risk zone across central Mississippi and extending back here into northeastern Louisiana, getting going as early as this afternoon, and we definitely could be seeing those values up around 5, 6 here, which means that we could have those violent, long-tracked EF2 or stronger type tornadoes in this environment, and you can see that here with the updraft helicity. This kind of shows you how long track some of these storms will be with those updrafts. And you can see right along central Mississippi, maybe northwestern Alabama, getting back into northeastern Louisiana, that will be kind of ground zero for the potential for those strong and violent long track tornadoes that could be on the ground for a long period of time later on today. So make sure you have multiple ways to receive warnings across those areas. We'll also have to look at the threat for some flash flooding across this area. Lots of rainfall in a short amount of time from the Tennessee Valley southward toward the Gulf Coast, really centered on southern Mississippi and southwestern Alabama. We could have a pocket there of about three to five inches of rain. And that is actually where the uh, Weather Prediction Center does uh, elevate this flash flooding potential to a moderate risk for flash flooding across southwestern Arkansas, southern Mississippi, but a large slight risk zone as well, covering southern Tennessee and the north of the Atlanta metro area and the northern Georgia, much of Alabama, Mississippi, and eastern Louisiana. That is a slight risk for excessive rainfall where we could have scattered flash flooding events in that area as well. And then as we move into your Wednesday, that cold front will continue to sweep its way to the east and southeast. A much lower threat for severe weather on Wednesday, but this does include places like Atlanta, Georgia, getting down toward the Macon, Georgia area, just west of Savannah, Georgia, getting up into South Carolina here, um, toward the Mobile, Alabama area, and the northwest Florida Panhandle. We definitely have to watch out for some isolated, strong to severe storms ongoing for your Wednesday morning, getting into your Wednesday afternoon. We do still have that 2% shading for tornadoes across southern Alabama, southwestern Georgia, getting into northwest Florida, extending back into southern Mississippi and back down towards the New Orleans, Louisiana area as we especially get through the morning and into the early afternoon hours on your Wednesday and also a lower end threat for wind around a 5% shading here across the southeast. Some of these wind gusts could be around 60 to 65 miles per hour the strongest as we get through the morning and into the early afternoon on your Wednesday. So putting it all together what the radar could look like here later on today and going through the next 48 hours or so. We got those supercell thunderstorms starting to fire up here later on this afternoon especially as we get towards that 
that one two o'clock time frame and really starting to get going peak daytime heating we got the uh you know three four five o'clock time frame this afternoon we got those supercell storms going and if we can see those discrete supercells by themselves ahead of the main line of storms then yeah we could be seeing those strong and violent long track tornadoes along with the damaging winds this will turn more to a damaging wind hail and heavy rain threat as we get into the morning hours on your wednesday as it crosses into the carolinas and especially down through georgia uh, portions of southeastern alabama and the northwest florida panhandle area definitely be on high alert for some damaging straight line winds some hail and some heavy rainfall we could still see a brief spin up tornado along the leading edge of this line as well but it looks like the tornado threat however will start to become a little less favorable with a more linear mode of severe weather and then this will march its way off here the east coast as we get into Wednesday afternoon time frame around 21Z. That will be about mid to late afternoon on your Wednesday. Looking at the rainfall amounts here as the storm system exits off the east coast and goes into the western Atlantic. Some heavier rains up here across the northeast. We could be talking about some steadier 1 to 2 inch rainfall amounts here from Maine. Getting back into New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, the Boston area, New York City. Some lighter amounts a little bit farther to the south but some heavier rainfall as well here in the green shaded colors and those light blues we could be talking about anywhere from a half an inch to an inch and a quarter of rainfall across the areas here in the carolinas virginia and getting down into georgia north florida as well and again we do have a threat for flash flooding tomorrow much lower than today but still a marginal risk for flash flooding around the atlanta metro area western south carolina and then getting back into northwest florida and southeastern alabama but then we also have a cold side to the system we have some snowfall that'll be flying across portions here of northern wisconsin getting back into the twin cities here in minnesota northwestern Iowa and then getting back into the central plains here on the cold side of this system. That's where we could see some widespread swath here of about three to eight inches of snow here, give or take. Um, and if you kind of zoom in here, you can definitely see a very narrow swath of snowfall could lay out, but it looks like some lake enhanced snowfall up here towards northern Wisconsin and the western UP of Michigan toward Lake Superior. We could be talking about three to six inches on average, but as you get into northern Wisconsin here, we could be talking about maybe eight plus inches of snow potential as we get into the next 24 to 48 hours. Hours. But then behind that, we got high pressure system working in, some sunshine here for the weekend, but another storm system here aiming into the Pacific Northwest as we get into this upcoming weekend, and that will definitely provide more mountain snow and upper elevation snow across much of the Rockies and getting into portions of the Pacific Northwest, southwestern Canada during this period. And again, that's with another trough that'll be digging into the Pacific Northwest here. And this will be kind of a long wave trough. This will kind of be ex uh, stretching its way back toward the eastern Pacific ocean so it's not going to be a very strong powerful compact trough like we see now but then as we get in toward that December time frame here as we go into December 3rd December 4th as we get to late this upcoming weekend we'll start to see that trough kind of break off in a couple different pieces one of those pieces moving up into central Canada the other kind of lingering back into the Pacific Northwest bringing cooler air those mountain snows and also the active weather there as well so looking at your temperatures here as we head into late this week on Friday December 2nd these are your high temperatures we got the warm air returning across portions of Kansas, getting into Oklahoma, Texas, and the deep south once again with those 50s and 60s. Much colder up into southern and southwestern Canada and to the northern plains. We could be seeing highs in the teens and 20s, if not below zero into southern Canada as we get into that time frame. A lot of that cold air will start to move its way farther southeast going into this weekend here on Saturday, December 3rd. These are your high temperatures in the teens and 20s across the upper Midwest with below zero up into North Dakota, getting into Saskatchewan, Man Manitoba and Western Ontario Canada for highs below zero and then as we go into Sunday December 4th again that will start to retreat its way back to the northeast toward Quebec and Ontario and we'll start to see a little bit more of that southerly flow um, into the United States during that period but still some colder air hanging on across the Pacific Northwest late this upcoming weekend and that cold does have some staying power going all the way through at least Monday December 12th getting into that second full week of December you know, the Climate Prediction Center's forecast calls for below normal temperatures during this period from the upper Midwest back toward the West Coast, where we have some warmer than normal temperatures along the immediate Gulf Coast and into Florida during that period as well. And again, after we get into that time frame, after we get through the first week in December and move into the second full week in December, that's where things get interesting. With that polar vortex, we could have kind of a stretching event or kind of a polar vortex disruption as we have kind of a ridge starting to build over top here, moving from the Alaska 
Alaska over here into northern Canada, and that will force all that cold air farther south into the southern Canada and the lower 48 here across the United States as we get into that second week in December. And that really sticks around as we go into that 11th and 12th time frame and potentially getting us here into the second half of December as well with a lot of these cooler air masses starting to move southward from Canada into at least the western and central United States here. We'll have to wait and see what happens for the eastern United States during that period. But what is known is that we're going to have some active weather across the west coast from portions of California, western Nevada getting up here into portions of Washington, Oregon State, western, uh, western Montana into the northern Idaho regions. We'll be seeing more of that mountain snow, some of that heavier rainfall with these strong storm systems slamming into the Pacific Northwest. We also might have an active subtropical jet from Texas across the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys, providing some above normal precipitation there. But around the Great Lakes, we look at below normal precipitation as we go through at least Monday, December 12th. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe out there from all the severe weather. I'll be going live later on this afternoon and this evening to cover all that severe weather with you guys. So thank, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, remain tuned in for that later on today. Remember to like the video down below, give it a thumbs up, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. And most importantly, guys, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Definitely appreciate all the new subscribers out there. Hit the notification bell as well to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Tuesday, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.